Does a Jew who believes in Yeshua remain a Jew? Are Messianic Jews truly Jewish? Or is their faith considered idolatry in Judaism? To answer these questions, we must start with the following question. Who is a Jew? It's a question that has been debated for centuries. First, we need to clarify something essential. When we ask, who is a Jew? We must distinguish between who is a Jew according to the Bible and who is a Jew according to rabbinical tradition. These are two very different definitions, and in some cases, they even contradict each other. So, let's start by asking, what does the Bible say? Who is a Jew according to the scriptures? In Hebrew, the term Jew, Yehudi, originates from the same word as the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. So in the Bible, the term Jew specifically refers to someone from the tribe of Judah, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So technically, the question shouldn't be who is a Jew, but rather, who is an Israelite, because the term Jew only covers one twelfth of the nation of Israel. The rest of the tribes are not from Judah, they are from the other 11 tribes. Therefore, when we talk about identity, the correct question is, who is an Israelite? According to the Bible, an Israelite is someone born to an Israelite father. It's a patrilineal identity. If your father is an Israelite, then you are an Israelite regardless of your mother's background or your personal beliefs. This holds true even if you worship idols, follow Baal or commit serious sins. You are still considered an Israelite because of your paternal lineage. This ethnic identity cannot be taken away from you. Now let's consider the case of an Israelite who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah. If an Israelite who worships Baal remains an Israelite, then certainly, someone who believes in Yeshua as the Messiah is still an Israelite. There is no power on earth that can remove this person from the people of Israel. But this raises another question. How can someone join the people of Israel according to the Bible? The answer is through marriage. A Gentile woman can marry an Israelite man, adopt the values of the Israelite people, and her descendants through her Israelite husband are considered Israelites. This is the only biblical way to integrate into the people of Israel. Even if a Gentile man marries a Jewish woman, according to the Bible, the children are not considered Israelites. This is because biblical identity is determined by the father's lineage. The biblical system is patriarchal, and integration into the people of Israel only occurs through marriage with an Israelite man. But what about the Jerem? the so-called strangers or sojourners who live among the Israelites but do not have an Israelite father. The Bible says that they are attached to Israel, but they remain Garam. They do not fully integrate into the people of Israel. Their hope, if they want their descendants to become Israelites, is to marry their daughters to Israelite men. In this way, their grandchildren would be considered Israelites. Over time, this is how many Garam were absorbed into the people of Israel. There was no concept of rabbinical conversion in the Bible. The idea of converting a Gentile into an Israelite without going through marriage is a later rabbinical invention. This is why Yeshua warned the Pharisees, saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel land and sea to win one proselyte, and when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. This was a harsh critique of the rabbinical system, which sought to convert Gentiles into Israelites without following the biblical method of integration through marriage. This is not just a biblical statement, it's a distinctly Israelite and Hebrew perspective. But what about today's rabbinical Judaism? How do the rabbis define who is a Jew? Once again, I must remind you that according to the Bible there is no such thing as who is a Jew, but rather, who is an Israelite. The rabbis, however, have developed their own definition. According to them, a Jew is someone born to a Jewish mother or someone who has converted according to halakha, which means rabbinic law. This is a significant departure from the biblical definition and is, in fact, a very late and unbiblical innovation. The rabbinical definition is puzzling. They say that being Jewish is a matter of birth if you are born to a Jewish mother, but it is also something that can be acquired through conversion. However, conversion must follow their specific rules halaha. But whose rules? Is it the rules of the Bible? The rules of the Sadducees, another Jewish sect? The rules of the Essenes? Or perhaps the rules of the early Messianic Jews? No, it is the rules of the rabbis. In other words, it is a sectarian definition. So according to the rabbinical definition, a Jew is not just someone who is born to a Jewish mother or converts according to halaha. A Jew is essentially someone who adheres to rabbinical beliefs and practices. If you do not accept their beliefs, you are not considered Jewish even if your parents were Jews. For example, a Karaite Jew, who was born to Jewish parents and has the surname Cohen or Levi, is not considered Jewish by the rabbis if he does not follow rabbinical law. Similarly, a Messianic Jew, a Jew who believes that Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel, is considered to have lost their Jewish identity by the rabbis simply because they reject rabbinical authority. This approach is intolerable as it goes against the Torah and the Bible. It is a man-made invention that has unfortunately become widespread. What else do the rabbis claim? They say that Jewish identity is determined by the mother 
because according to them, you can only be certain of a child's identity through the mother. But what does the Bible say? The Bible refers to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It does not say the egg of Leah, the egg of Rachel, or the womb of Leah, the womb of Rachel. If we were to follow the rabbinical logic, we would question whether King David, who is descended from Ruth the Moabite, is truly an Israelite. But this is absurd because the Bible clearly identifies him as an Israelite, and more than that, as the ancestor of the Messiah, the son of David. The rabbis argue that paternity cannot be determined with certainty, only maternity, because of the physical evidence of pregnancy. But this argument is flawed. How then do we know that Isaac was the son of Abraham? How do we know that Jacob was the son of Isaac? How do we know the entire genealogy of the Israelites? And what an insult it is to women to say that only the physical proof of pregnancy matters, as if a woman cannot testify truthfully about her husband being the father of her child. Is a woman not trustworthy enough to bear witness to the paternity of her children? It's clear why Yeshua was so upset with the rabbis, especially when they insisted that conversion, according to their halaha, was the only way to become part of Israel. What does this mean? If, for instance, a billion Chinese people were to convert according to rabbinical law, would they then belong to the people of Israel just because they followed the rabbis' rules? And yet a true Israelite, born into the people of Israel but who disagrees with the rabbis, is somehow no longer part of Israel? The internal contradictions of the rabbis' teachings are apparent. They say that a Jew, even if he sins, is still a Jew, but in practice, they try to exclude anyone from the people of Israel who does not share their views, including Jewish believers in Yeshua. These individuals are fully Israelites, and their faith in Yeshua not only does not exclude them from Israel, but, on the contrary, makes them faithful sons and daughters of Israel.